Hi, Joe Pysinski here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I need to start this video with a big thank you to Chuck over at Outside Screwball for a video that he posted, a uh, short screw, uh, praising some of the videos that I've been posting and sent a lot of people my way. I've gotten tremendous feedback, great comments. If I can't get or answer all the comments that you guys leave, you should see my mailbox. It's crazy. So. I do appreciate it. The thumbs up, the subscriptions, it's all like a big thank you, pat on the back. It makes this worthwhile because this isn't very easy to do. If you post videos online and you post process them, it can be very time consuming when you get through demonstrations and practical demonstrations in the shop. So thank you to all my new subscribers, men and women. Got a lot of ladies on board now, which is great to see. Uh, forgive me. I will usually open or refer to the people I'm speaking to as you guys. I'm from New Jersey originally. I do live in Texas now. I got here as soon as I could. All right. The other day I posted a video on how to set a compound at a very precision angle and I hope some of you have tried it because it does work. And now I'm going to show you how to measure those features that you cut. There are two different ways to do it and the first one I'm going to show you is pretty easy. I'm going to move the camera a little closer to the board so that what shows up on the whiteboard is hopefully clearer in the video. Give me just one second. For the example today, I'm going to use a 60 degree included angle, a 30 degree cone. This is a conical feature in the face of a part. Just for, for yucks, let's say this is a, only a half an inch across, so it's rather small. The easiest way to find out what you have right here is to drop a ball in there. Now make sure whatever ball you drop in there hits those points and doesn't go down inside the cone, okay? So the theory here is your tool's on center, your angle's correct, there's no burrs on those corners, and the corners are dead sharp. When you put a ball down in there, let's say this is a one inch diameter ball for the definition of this. You have the center point of the ball. You know that this is 500 because it's the radius. You know that this is 500 as well because it's the radius. And then when you take your measurement to see what you have, whatever this measurement comes out to, let's call it 900 minus the radius gives you the other leg of the triangle, 400. So now that you have two legs and it's a right triangle, finding that bottom one is a piece of cake. You don't even need a trig book for it. You'll need a calculator, but you won't need a trig book. And the, and the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And if you have any of the values in this particular equation, you can find out what the third leg is really easy. So let's do A squared is the green one right there. B squared is what you're looking for. And C squared is your radius. Okay. There you go. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's say you don't have this one right here. Well, you take A squared and C squared, and you subtract the two, and then that gives you B squared. Now, make sure that you take the square root of that value because you're looking for a value that is squared. All right, A squared, B squared, C squared. Given diameter, you have your height. If you have a given height on your print and you know you want to hit it, for reasons whatever, if you're given a height and you want to move, don't move your cross slide to adjust your cone. Leave your cross slide where it is and move the entire carriage because theoretically as you move the carriage, that feature migrates on a one-to-one -one with the carriage as it's moving. Boom. So leave the cross slide where it is, still use your compound to single point the angle, move the whole carriage to get your gauge height. That's the easiest one. And this only works when the ball hits these points right here. It must hit those points. If it's subsurface, this is out the window. 
Now I'm going to show you what happens if it is subsurface. Okay, got it? Now there's going to be a lot going on here, and I'm going to be talking a little bit fast so that I can keep the video short. But that's why the pause button is on your player, right? All right. Let's say we have, this is an inch and a half diameter cone now. Sorry that you're filming my shoulder. Here we go. Thirty degrees. And you've got your given gauge diameter on the print, where you can develop that gauge diameter yourself by just reversing some of the techniques that I'm showing you. Now, if you have a gauge diameter, what does that actually give you? Where is the construction here? Well, you know that because it's on the print. Your included angle is 60 degrees. Half that angle is now 30 degrees, right? So that gives you 30 degrees there. Good, we're getting somewhere. The projection coming from your tangent point to the center of the ball that you drop down in there is always going to come off at a 90 degree angle. Ninety. 90, 60 degrees, 30, if that's 30, that makes this 60, if this is a right angle, that makes this 30, there's a lot going on here, here's the radius of your ball, we're going to use a 1 inch diameter ball, so that makes this 0.500, this is happening real easy, all the information is there, you just have to draw it and take a look. If this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I use that because it's quick and it's easy to understand, then this height here is 0.250. Okay? Now the only thing you need to find out is where, where it is on the ball. I'm going to draw the ball in here in red. Let's see if I can do it justice. Close enough, right? One inch diameter ball. Now if we know that this leg is 250 from center, we also know that this point right here to the tangent on top is what? 750. Because this upper leg, radius 0.5, gives us an AB. I'm going to tag that so you can see it. A, B equals 750. You figured out your triangle, you figured out your diameter, your ball, everything is right there. The only thing you need to know now in order to hit the diameter on the print, which is given, because that's why you're going through this fiasco, that's what you're looking to hit. When you find out what your triangle is, the bottom of that particular triangle is 433. which gives you a chord gauge dimension or a contact tangent chord of 866. Shoot that straight up. If you know that it's 866 away from your one inch 500 required, well you've just been given another triangle. The difference in that is 634, which makes each side 317. 317, 30 degrees. Figure out the third leg with your trig book or your shop calculator, which is a good thing to have. I looked it up online. Makes this 549. So from the face of your part to your gauge point, 
549. But we know that the gauge point to the top of the ball is 750. So what does that make the measurement you're looking for? 201. Right there. 201, 549, 750. 250, radius of 500, 750. All the information is there. All you need to do is break out your trig book. This is going to take a couple of minutes to absorb. If you haven't done this a thousand times, you're going to be scratching your head going, I'm not quite sure what I just witnessed, but it sure was colorful. This works very well. This works very well. Now when you measure from the top of the ball to the part, if you have the part on a surface plate, do it with a digital height gauge or do it with gauge blocks and an indicator. If you're looking for a super precision, don't just wing it. If you know the thickness of the part and you can measure over the whole thing with a big micrometer, do it that way as well. If you can't take the part out of the machine and you've planned your job, well you'll have a ring with a one inch two thousandths diameter bore in it that's exactly an inch thick and all you do is you put that over the cone you stick that ball down inside that cone and then you measure from the face of your ring to the top of the ball and you'll have everything that you need to know this is very confusing initially but it's very precision and it's a guaranteed way that you are going to come up with that dimension if you are looking for a specific height on that ball as you are cutting that feature, once again, do not move your cross slide to adjust your bore. Continue to single point it with the compound, but you can reduce this, this height with the carriage. Continue to come in with the carriage, and it's one to one. This is measuring 211, move that carriage in 10 thou, take your cut, you're going to have your 201, you're going to have your inch 500, everything is going to be wonderful, and the inspector is going to wonder how you did it. There you go. Got any questions? Post them underneath. I hope that was clear. I'm going to zoom in here for a second and uh, give you a second look before I sign off. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your feedback. And I just uh, have a great Labor Day weekend. See you next time. Joe Pye, out.